here he is. He's walking the room right now. We're getting him as he comes off the off the golf course. Sir, we want we want to stand and shake your hands. Our mics are down here, so here we go. Here we go. You just sit. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Mr. President. Great of you to uh, make the time for us here. Um, look, you know Clay and I have a bet. Can we start with this one? Yes. Okay. Bet. A stake assume, bet. Assuming it's going to be you, sir. Assuming it's going to be you, which it certainly looks like now in all the polls. And we've been saying this. It's just overwhelming favorite now based on the numbers. Do you think you're going to be facing Joe Biden? Or you think they're going to pull some last minute plan, shenanigans, some kind yeah. of a plot? What do you well, think? Well, that's all they know how to do. That's all they're good at is shenanigans. And uh, I think that it possibly will be him. I would have said almost definitely. I find it hard to believe he's the worst president in history. He's the worst. He's making. Jimmy Carter looked like a genius. Jimmy Carter may be the happiest man around today. He's uh, he's an elderly gentleman right now, but he's a very happy man because he looks brilliant by comparison to what's happening to our country right now. But uh, I I think it's going to be him. Yeah. It looks like Do you it. want it to be him? Would you like to run it? If you could pick an opponent, yeah. you know, you're going to go to a UFC fight up at Madison Square Garden. Right. People are going to love it. Right. Sometimes those guys get to pick the guy that they want to fight right, against. Right. Would you pick Biden as the opponent if you had to pick a Democrat to run against right now? Well, I don't want to do anything to influence because, you know, uh, anything I say, they're going to do the opposite and they're going to think it's a chess <laughs> game. And, you know, and, when you, get, and when you get right down to it, it is a chess game, right? Uh, I'd love to run against Biden. I think I did great against him when I ran. Uh, I don't know. You know, I, your show is great, and I know your opinions on things, but what went on in that election is yeah. disgraceful. But I think that uh, it's probably, if I had a choice, I would pick him, and I would pick uh, Kamala second. I would say she's right there. It looks like he's not going to be able to get rid of her, so in a certain way you could say she's running also much more strongly than a normal vice president would be running, and that's okay. Some people say you campaign against her because people don't want her. And they say it's very hard to take her out of the equation. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they're saying. Uh, I would say that if I had my choice, I'd love to run against him. Uh, I got 75 million votes that they say. That's what they say. But I think it was many, many more votes. We have uh, very, very third world elections. Uh, you see that up in Connecticut this weekend, this yeah, last uh, few days. Uh, and it happened again last night. They found a lot of uh, improprieties you know, to, President, to use a, lot, a nice word. We get a lot word. of calls, emails from people voted for you. And, and one of their anxieties is, well, why is it going to be different this yeah. time? Is the Trump team on it? Have they yeah. done the things necessary to ensure things the next time around? What do you say to them? So I, the two biggest questions I get is, how do you take it? And the second is, will it happen again? Meaning the cheating. And the cheating is massive. Uh, we got caught with COVID. And again, you know, I was uh, somebody that ran very, very hard. I did seven rallies on the final day, seven. And they were all big rallies. They weren't small ones. They were big ones. Started at nine in the morning and we fin finished up at four in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. And uh, all over the place. I went from Florida to Iowa. I went from 81 degrees to two degrees below zero. <laughs> That's pretty tough. It's not, right? a, not a trade people want to make very often. No, no. And, and you know, honestly, that's, uh, if you can look at, that's called pneumonia time. When you go from 81 or 82 to two degrees below zero at, uh, late in the evening, that's, uh, that's, a, you're covering a lot of territory. And I did a great job and we got votes like nobody's ever, no, no sitting president has ever gotten anywhere near that number of votes. And I felt I could go home and I would watch a fair election. And I went home and it looked really good. And then around 10 o'clock in the evening, all of a sudden I started finding lots of ballots and start, things started changing. And then at 3.02 uh, in the morning, things happened that were really, really bad. So, you know, we did great against him. And uh, I believe we won by a, a tremendous amount. And we have proof of it and we're releasing the proof. And you'll see the proof. It'll come up a lot over the next period of a few months. And I think it's very important for people... To know, uh, you know, we have uh, in Alabama, we had a man that uh, was very strong, Mo Brooks, and then he went, he thought he was going to go political. I think he hired uh, John McCain or Mitt Romney's consultants, and they say, forget about the election, forget about it. And he forgot about it, and he went from a 54-point lead in a period of about 24 hours to losing to being in third place. And Katie Britt ended up winning. I endorsed her, and she ended up winning. Uh, so it's a very important issue. You have to learn from history.
But I went home and I thought I did a great job and I thought I'd enjoy watching it on television. And I did until around 10 o'clock in the evening. Then I said, what's going on here? It was crazy. And, you know, we have to have strong borders and we have to have fair elections. And if we don't have fair elections and strong borders and some other things, too, but maybe they're the most important things. We have to have borders and we have to have elections that are great. Mr. Mr. Trump, uh, during your time, there was no Russian invasion of Ukraine. Right. And there was no mass casualty 9-11 style terror attack against Israel by Hamas. Right. You didn't have a national security background beforehand. You were a businessman beforehand. But I talked to you, you on occasion. You, you know, you got some good Mr. Advisors. CIA. Yeah, you wanted no, to be Mr. CIA. CIA. I thought he was great. Right. Yep, he was. He would be very good. I think he would be very good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you, um, by the way, you would be very good. Thank you, sir. Go uh, ahead. The, on, on this, on these issues um, of national security right now, the world is less safe. People feel that now. You're seeing that, and a lot of Americans are seeing the Biden foreign policy and Biden national security policies crumble before their eyes. And, and say to themselves, hold on a second, they were supposed to be the team that knows what they're doing. What do you do to come in on, when you come into office, if you win, on Ukraine, on Israel? What are some of the ways that you're going to approach those issues? So the saddest thing is that it would have never happened under a Trump administration. Ukraine was not going to happen. And it didn't happen. You know, for four years, he didn't he doesn't change. And he's somebody that wants to get things done the way he wants them. And I knew him very well. I got along with him very well. We had a very good relationship. But uh, and and in fact, you know, the whole Russia thing was a hoax and it made it really harder to get along with Putin and Russia. And uh, what they did was really treasonous, if you think about it, because you could end up in a war if we had different people, maybe a different guy than him and a different guy than me. Uh, you could have ended up in a war because of the Russian hoax. And it was a total hoax. And that's been proven. But the sad thing is it would have never happened, and it didn't happen. The same thing with Israel. That would have never, they would have never been attacked for simple reason, that Iran was broke. I told China, if you buy any oil, any, from Iran, and that's where they made all of their money, a lot of money, they have a lot of oil, uh, you're not going to do any business in the United States, and we're going to also tariff you at 100%, anything that does come through. I said the same thing to India. I said the same thing to many countries and literally nobody bought and they were broke. And if you remember, in fact, you guys covered it very well in a different position you were in, frankly, but you both covered it very well. They didn't have money for Hamas. They didn't have money for Hezbollah. They didn't have money for any of these terrorist groups. And during my four years, we had no terrorism, none. And I didn't want to talk about it. I couldn't talk about it because I don't want to say it. And like what happened to them, they you started know, talking. And, and destroying you ISIS, it. by the way, destroying yeah. ISIS. That was a and very I did nice destroy ISIS, ISIS right? Yes. I destroyed them in four months. And uh, people said you couldn't do it in four years. We have great, you know, we have great military and we have great generals, not the idiots you see on yeah. television. We have some great generals. I could go over. We'll do a second show on some of the people. But we knocked out ISIS way, way, way fast. Nobody thought it would even be possible. And by the way. I had it down to 99%. I said, okay, let's get out of there. And the fake news started hitting me. Why don't you do the rest? I said, all right, do the rest. And they did the rest in about two minutes. The last time we were with you, Bed uh, Bedminster, yeah. beautiful golf course. Right. You were hosting a live event there. Right. Your grandkids walked in. Your grandfather. Right. You've got Jewish grandchildren. Yeah. When you saw what Hamas did, not as president, but as grandpa. Yeah. What did that feel like to think those could have been my grandchildren? Did that strike you? It did. A lot of things struck me. First of all, the level of uh, ferocity and uh, the level of hatred and also the inhumanity nobody's ever seen. 42 babies had their heads cut off. It's not even reported, really, because I think it's so gross and so horrible that people maybe correctly don't want to report it, but... Maybe it's a better thing that they do because, you know, I look at what's going on now and it seems like that's one part of the equation that nobody's talking about anymore. You know, they're not talking about when. Can you believe the Democrats are trying to defend some of them? Hamas? They're trying to not only some of them, a lot of them. And Biden now is trying to be neutral. Yeah. Biden the is Democrats really... have an anti-Semitism problem, don't they? In the party. There's a real anti-Semitism. Yeah, I party. think they have a lot of problems. It's, you know, Israel was the strongest. Let's call it a lobby. The strongest lobby that you had in the country 15 years ago today it's almost like if you defend israel you're gonna have some problems when i watch uh, aoc plus three yeah or when i watch this talib get up and just absolutely what she said if i would have said that i said 
peacefully and patriotically, right? Look at me. Look at look at the things I said, how nice they were, how good. Go home. Uh, our police and law enforcement, they love you. They cherish you. You know, the things I said, if I would have said what they said, it, nobody nobody can believe what she's been saying. Now, see, she got censured, but not such a big deal. What she said, if that were coming out of my mouth, uh, I would have been excoriated. DHS Secretary Mayorkas, the border is something we talk about here a lot on the show. Mayorkas was asked if he knew how many millions of illegals who have entered the country under Biden, how many of those millions are still here? The estimates are something like six to eight million have come into the country. The most that anybody can remember, probably the most of all time. I mean, you knew it was going to be bad. Did you think it was going to be this bad? And how do you fix it when we uh, if things are in a position for you to turn them around by having Trump term two? So I think that, first of all, we had the strongest border in history three years ago. Think of it. We went from the strongest border to the weakest border anywhere in the world, in my opinion. There's never been anything like it in the world. I don't care what country, third world country. I would always say they use sticks and stones. They wouldn't let this happen to a country. And uh, I believe the number is 15 million people by the end of that term, the way they're coming. And, you know, they have the largest caravans anyone's ever seen now walking as we as we speak right now. Right now. Yeah. They have the largest caravan anybody's ever seen coming through Mexico and just going to pour right into our country. And as you know, and I say it all the time, and I'll be saying it tonight in Hialeah, uh, and we're going to have a big crowd. We're going to have 35, 40,000 people. Here I am. It shows my respect for you. I'm going and I'm supposed to be getting ready for going down and I'm talking to you guys and you guys say, how about saying another 25 minutes? And we're jokingly saying, do you think Biden would do a 45 well, I, I minute this interview? before? If Joe Biden, Mr. President, sat down with us for one hour, they would invoke the 25th Amendment and they would no yeah. longer be able to defend him as being able. But to then run. Kamala would be president. So is that well, that might get a little bit yeah. might get a little bit scarier. I want to ask you this. We were just talking about Israel. Um, Hillary Clinton on The View. You probably haven't seen this. Today, I know you call her beautiful Hillary now, so you might have to change the uh, the <laughs> adjective. Uh, Hillary Clinton said that you were Hitler-like in some ways. The Democrats right now are defending, some of them, Hamas from the worst attack since the Holocaust. Yeah. We talked about you have Jewish grandchildren. You have a Jewish daughter now. That seems beyond the pale to me. An attack like that... Can you believe that even they would stoop that low and continue even in the wake of what happened? Well, part of the reason we have this tremendous, uh, they say, Trump derangement syndrome, whatever it is. And she's one of the type, top uh, purveyors of it, to be honest with you. But you know, she was expected to win. The Democrats were expected to win the election. They didn't even know they'd be running against but long before I got it. They would they were expected to easily win. They do have an advantage. You know, they start off with 38 points. People say, how come Biden's up at 38, 37, 32? Because they start off with a big group of people. You know who the people are. And I think we're actually taking a lot of those people, but the Republicans don't. Uh, but no, she's uh, she's deranged. She's got uh, I mean, she's never gotten over it. And the party's never gotten over it, frankly. And that's why they hit me so hard. And now we're winning by a lot. How can they say you're the threat to democracy when they're the ones who are weaponizing the justice system yeah. in multiple indictments against you to prevent the American people from being able to vote for you? And multiple indictments and beyond indictments, even civil cases. They want to keep me so busy. They want to keep me in courthouses. This never happened in this country before. Happens in other countries, third world countries, banana republics. Never happened in this country before. And now people are seeing. And so far, it's been backfiring. Uh, because I, I went up, I'm the only person probably that ever got indicted who went up very substantially in the polls immediately upon the announcement of the indictment. And that's because I can go on your show. I can talk to you guys about it. I can go on other shows if I have to. I can get the word out. A normal politician would be destroyed. They got indicted. They would leave. They would immediately announce they're going back to their family. That would be it. So, so far it hasn't worked out, but. It should never be done. And they're opening a big Pandora's box. I was on Jesse Waters. I know you like Jesse and watch him recently. And he asked me the Ooh. question, uh, do you think Trump, he was asking me, would benefit from being arrested for violating a gag order and potentially thrown in prison? Do you think that would benefit you politically? Do you think the judges have the wherewithal to be willing to do that? How would you analyze? Because you're good. To me, it's a clear constitutional violation. I'm speaking as a yeah. lawyer. Yeah. You should be able to speak out. 
But do you think they would put you in prison, jail, and do you think that would benefit you if it happened? Well, I actually think they're capable of anything. Uh, I never thought that as a president who was a popular president. Again, I got more votes even with their numbers, which were uh, frankly not correct. But I'm being nice when I say that. But uh, I got more votes than any other sitting president. That's a popular president. And we did a good job with the taxes, with everything, with the military, with, you know, no wars. We didn't start any wars. We rebuilt our military. So much uh, best job numbers, best economy we've ever had. No inflation, energy independent, going to be energy dominant. We would have been in six months the most dominant energy source in the world that the world has ever seen. And boom, it was all stopped. And that's what started inflation. So I was very popular. Uh, I was always uh, of the opinion that a thing like this couldn't happen. In other words, you protect your former presidents. It's, uh, you know, it's a terrible thing to go after a former president, other than if you're in a banana republic. And, and a possible a future thing. president as well. And which a possible, adds to it. yeah, it's possible. Do you think they would put you in, in jail, and do you think that would benefit you? I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to say. Yeah, I don't want to say about benefit because I don't want to predict that but uh would I, would they if they could i think they would do it yeah i think it's not beyond them i think these are very uh deranged and angry people have you thought about if they put you in prison and you're the nominee that you could be trying to run for president from prison i mean that's a crazy thing to even have to consider have you contemplated it? well a lot of crazy things have happened over the last uh, period of time and number one i won the election that people said couldn't happen. You know, in the history of elections, presidential, 93% have been politicians, 7% have been generals. And there's never been sort of an outsider. I guess that was the ultimate outsider. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, a lot of things have happened and we did a great job and it could happen again for somebody. Although when they see what I go through, I've had a lot of successful people say, wow, at first when you did it, I think, you know, they well, they sort of said, I wish I could have done that. But now uh, a lot of people that are very successful would not. Well, we often it. say, sir, the process is the punishment. You know, there is a Republican debate that is happening tonight. Yeah. You're not going to be there. You're doing your event at, at Hialeah. Just wondering um, if, if, well, one thing, how do you think uh, your your competitors are going to do tonight on the stage against each other? Do you have any predictions you would share with us? And also, assuming you win. Would you consider any of the people debating tonight as a possible VP candidate? It's possible. Look, some of them I like a lot. Some of them are running. I, I happen to have a couple of them that are very friendly. They Well, uh, you could look at some, say I was the best president in Vivek a generation. He has said it. A couple of others have said it, too. Uh, Nikki Haley actually said he was a great president. I would never run against him. He was a great, great president, the best president in 100 years. And then, you know, three months later, I will be running against the president. So, you know, these are politicians. It's one of those things. Uh, the mugshot photo is iconic. Well, I went you to Atlanta. One take. Tell me Yeah, why. I'll give it to you. One take. I went to Atlanta and I was greeted by a sheriff who was really very nice. And he was apologetic for having to do it. And we walked into a building, a lot of police. And they were so nice and waving to me and everything else. It was a little, little interesting. And they said, sir, are you ready? I said, for what? We're going to take a photo of you. And it was a camera in the ceiling. I said, okay, uh, where is it? It's up in the ceiling. And I looked at the ceiling. Ready, sir? Yeah, boom. And they didn't do two, three, four, five. And when I saw it, which was sent to us a few hours later, when I saw the picture, I couldn't believe it. I said, it's actually a decent picture. It's a good picture. It's maybe they were all saying this is an iconic picture. This was something that was very unusual. I figured it would be a horrible. You're like an Instagram it, it, star. I is, thought it was going to be a horrible picture, but it was a pretty it, cool. It came picture. out very well. We appreciate the T-shirt. So I want to try to to get everybody on a hopeful note here because a lot of our audience feels like right now we talked about the national security challenges under Biden. We've talked about the wide open border, the crime in cities, and the economic impact of this administration. People yeah. can't afford. Food. They can't afford gas. They're running up credit card bills that they're going to be stuck with for years, just paying off the interest. Bidenomics, as you know, was something they rolled out and have basically rolled back because they realize it's not going to it's not going to work for them, not with inflation where it is, not with mortgage rates where they are. People look back to 2019. They look back the last year of your presidency and they think about the economy that we had, not with COVID going on, just the economy that we had for the years of your of your first term. How do we get back there? Can we get back there? What would you do? Well, we can. We have the greatest economy in history, and now we have a bad economy, and inflation has destroyed it. And uh, anything they do have, it's just the fumes of from what we left, because we left the best numbers that they've, anybody's ever seen. 
And and we as acknowledged to be the greatest economy in history. I'm the president with the greatest economy. And we were also very safe. We had security. We had everything going. But we're going to bring back uh, energy and we're going to get energy down. It's very expensive. It's five dollars, five dollars. And even in California, it's eight dollars and nine cents today for a tank for a gallon of gasoline. We're going to get that way down. We're going to bring energy way down. That's going to bring other things down. We're going to get rid of inflation. We're going to lower interest rates. You're going to be able to buy a house again. And we will get this going so incredibly well. We're going to strengthen the border. Not strengthen it. It's so weak now. We're going to make it really like I had it, if not stronger. You know, he likes to go to the beach. If he just went to the beach when he came in, just went to the beach every single day, he inherited the strongest border we've ever had. And now we have the worst. He inherited the greatest economy ever, especially pre-COVID. But then I got it back to a point where the stock market was higher than when COVID first yeah, came in. Nobody yeah, can even way. believe sure. it. The recovery was incredible, what we did in just a short period of time. And he inherited all of these things. I rebuilt the military. We did so much. And if he just would have gone to the beach every day, because somebody in his group, you know, one of these consultants likes him on the beach. I don't particularly think it looks very good. You don't he, think he looks good shirtless? So. I don't think. <laughs> and when he can't lift one of those chairs <laughs> yeah. that weighs six ounces that any it yeah. made for anybody to lift. 74%, by the way, even on CNN, we were talking about that stat earlier, think that he does not have the stamina to be president of the United States. I mean, 74%. Yeah. It's hard. By the way, this is breaking news I wanted to hit you with. Uh, James Comer House Oversight Committee has announced subpoenas targeting President Biden's family, including Hunter and James Biden. How corrupt do you think the Biden family is? And in retrospect now that you got impeached for asking about clear Ukrainian corruption actions right. of the Bidens. Right. It's pretty extraordinary. Yeah, I got impeached for that, and it turned out I was 100% right. Everyone says, boy, that was terrible because Trump was right. I was right. You know, they do have a hat that says Trump was right about everything. We were right sort of about everything, but we were right about that. And, you know, when I got indicted, it was a whole new ballgame for me. I now had a respect for the office of the president before the indictment, I treated him much differently than I treat him now. I treated him with a certain degree of respect. I treated him as, a, as a, an opponent. Now I treat him, and oh, very truthful, he's the worst president we've ever had. He's grossly incompetent. He has no idea what's going on, and he's totally corrupt. I wouldn't have said those things before, but they basically opened a Pandora's box, which, by the way, can hit, come back to hit and really hit them hard. So uh, I think they should have uh, Hunter there. I think Hunter will be unable to answer the questions. And I think, frankly, they should call Joe Biden also. One of the biggest problems that the country has right now seems to be the two-tier justice system, yeah. which you know better, better than most, right. and the weaponization of the Department of Justice and, and federal prosecution for political ends. How do you clean that up? Because a lot of people see this now, Clay was talking about his IRS audit recently. Recently, yeah. a lot yeah, of people I take see, over this show. Yeah. I did Sports yeah. Talk is Radio. That, uh, you know, nobody well, cared. Uh, I take this show. Suddenly, I got uh, an IRS. A lot of people see terrible? this. Yeah. A lot of people see this, Mr. President. They say, "How do we come back from this?" Because well, it's a two-way really street. It's when this happens, and one of the things I hated so much. This is now going to be maybe standard fare, maybe, and maybe it won't be. You know, if you pick the right people at the top, and we had some great people. You know, we talk about people that I didn't like, but we had some great people that did a fantastic job. All of the things we did, you know, rebuilding the military, all the things we did, we had some unbelievable people in the administration. But it does start from the top of a big agency, whether it's uh, DOJ or FBI. You pick the right people. You have to get the right ones. And when you get it right, it's beautiful. Most of our agencies were phenomenal, the job they did. Uh, environmental, as an example, the environmental didn't stop us, and yet we were very environmentally friendly. But it didn't stop us from doing things that were incredible. You know, we didn't, it wasn't a bottleneck. They just use it for a bottleneck. I used it to have clean air, clean water, and let's get the job done and let's produce a lot of jobs. But we have to get the right people. But when it comes to the weaponization, that's a very dangerous game they're playing because if I win, I can say, well, you know, there's a Democrat that's really doing well against me. Mr. Attorney General, make sure you indict him because you can indict anybody for anything. You can walk across the street the wrong way and you can get indicted. And it's a shame. It's a shame. And they've opened a box that should never have been opened. And on nonsense, they say, I challenge the election. Of course I did. It was a corrupt election. 
but I challenge it. But they all challenged the election in 2016. I mean, almost every Democrat congressman and senator challenged the election in 2016. But when we challenge it, they open a box where you get indicted over it. And that's a very dangerous thing for them, but it's a very bad thing and dangerous thing for our country. Will there be a lot of pardons and commutations of people that you think were treated unfairly, uh, J6 defendants, January 6 defendants under an administration, uh, your administration? Yes, absolutely. They were treated horribly. And it's very interesting when I see that very expensive fence that I built in front of the White House. You know, we built that. We rebuilt it. It's made of titanium. And it's really, when I see that being damaged by these people, that's the White House. Mostly you have the Capitol. Let's see what happens to those peaceful protesters about the damage that they're doing to the White House and areas around the White House. Because we have people put in jail for five, six, seven years who didn't do anything wrong. And yes, that will happen very quickly. Quickly, do you want cameras in the event you're in a courtroom? Well, I'd love to, but I wish they had it when I testified. You know, now it's going to be perhaps a little bit less exciting. It's very sad to watch my daughter be dragged along by that attorney general who's just a disgraceful person. Disgraceful. President Trump, thanks for being here with us. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you very much, both.